This video is made with the sponsorship of Ecrotech New Zealand, one source for all your beekeeping requirements. Hi, Trev here from Trev's Bees on Facebook and YouTube. Today I want to talk to you about the Hive Doctor floor. This was developed by a good friend of mine, Stu Ferguson from down the wire wrapper and he's now sold this to Ecrotech New Zealand. So they're only available through Ecrotech New Zealand now um, and their agencies. I run Hive Doctor floors on all my hives. So I just want to explain to people who have never seen them before or don't quite understand how they work and how, they were set and how to set them up for your beekeeping. Now one of the things that they were set up for was to be screwed to pallets. So they've actually got four little screw holes here at, the, at each end. I'll explain that shortly. And how I don't use pallets, but I've got a slightly different system. But it works fine. We've got three little colours across here. They come in a multitude of colours, usually all in the pastel shades, and you can change these around to put them around. This is just to, and they've got a little shape inside them. This is purely to help the bees identify and to mitigate a little bit of uh, drifting. I don't believe it makes a heck of a difference, but however, um, that's the concept behind it. We have on here six little lugs and the floor sits around these lugs. So in front of these two and outside of these four. And the bees can only get in through this little 65 mil entrance. I leave that on the 65 mil entranceway all year round. Some people actually lift the hot box up and put it over the front so the bees can get in right across here. I don't believe it's necessary. The bees don't care. They just come and go. In the wild, the bees don't uh, alter their doorway of the, of the tree where they've got their hole to uh, summer and winter mode so it's okay. Oh, I believe so. We can actually turn that down like that so that there's just one bee space on each side. So if you've got a problem with robbing or some such thing, you can close it down or you can close it right up like so so the bees can't get in here. So if you have to transport these hives, they're very simple to lock them up. Mine pretty much stay like that all year round. Now the floor, as you can see, we'll try and hold it up to the light so you can see the light coming from outside. Stu tells me that when he designed this, there is a 9% ventilated floor. So these are not a fully ventilated floor, they are a partly ventilated floor. Which means that there's a good airflow that comes through the hive but not so much that the bees get cold. Got little lugs inside here to stop the plastic distorting. One of the problems in the earlier designs was that they distorted a little bit and bees could escape uh, out through there. That became a bit of an issue, now being fixed. We have an area up here shaped like a hive tool where if you need to lift the box up to pry it off the floor, you can hook in there. We have a little uh, indent here so your hive strap can go all the way around and lock into place nicely. One of the problems with plastic is that these feet here, the thickness is very, very thin. Now, and if you sit these straight on the ground, 
with the weight of the hive and as the ground gets soft during the winter and such like with the rain, these will actually sink into the ground like so and therefore block off all that mesh. So I've got a way of fixing that. Stu's design was to screw them onto a pallet. That's great. But I don't like pallets. I don't use four-way pallets. I'll show you my system of pallets later. But I don't like them screwed down because I like to be able to, in the spring, tip them over, give them a bang, clean anything that's fallen down there out. One thing you notice, that there's 10 of these ridges. When you've got the box sitting on top, the ridge, the frame, sits exactly over the top of these ridges. So these vents here are between the two frames. The two frames are sitting here like that. So any hive debris that's there will fall down and fall straight out of the hive. It's supposed to happen, uh, help with varroa, uh, varroa control, but I'm not so sure. Um, you can also get some inspection trays that you can put under here. Uh, it'll take three trays, and over in Australia, they use one of the trays for uh, putting some poison in for small hive beetle. It doesn't affect the bees, but it kills a small hive beetle. So, just as a little thing, this is how the box, this is a feeder ring, sits over the top. So these two lugs in the front, so the hive can't go forward. These lugs on the inside, so the hive can't go sideways very much. Some people pick that up, shift it over there like that, and now the whole of the entranceway here is open. As I say, I don't bother, I leave mine like that. Okay. How do I set up my little feet? Well, I'll set it up for the little. So I make a couple of little bits of wood, put a four by two in the front. Because it's got bigger feet in the front, I put a bigger piece of wood. That's 425 millimeters wide. These are 40 millimeter stainless steel screws, and I put one in each corner. You can use a battery drill instead of one of these big Yankee screwdrivers. But I like this because I can do this out in the field if I've forgotten to set them up before I go. Now, that's just raised the floor an extra 50 millimeters, and I've found that that has helped with ventilation under the floor and it just stops condensation building up in the hive. So that's it with the hive doctor floor, how I set them up, how I recommend that you set them up. And that's Trev in the workshop on Facebook and YouTube.